So now we're going to start exploring sound and some of the properties of sound. So um, before we start, just think for a minute, what do you think, what is sound? What does it mean for something to make sound? And what does it mean for you to hear something? Sound is a wave. What kind of wave do you think sound is? All right, well, let's get into it a little bit, okay? So sound is a longitudinal wave, okay? So we talked about transverse waves before. Sound is a longitudinal wave. A longitudinal wave is one where the vibration of the particles is parallel to the path of the particles, okay? And so it kind of creates like little pockets of pressure. And so here you have like a visual example. Particles are moving back and forth, and the waves move into the side, so it's parallel. Okay, and so here's actually an example of one. So you can see the wave moving to the right. But if you track an individual particle, so just pick a particle on the screen and watch it move. And what is it doing? What is the individual particle doing that you see? So hopefully you can see they're just kind of bouncing back and forth, back and forth. And this is a longitudinal wave. Okay, and sound is really the the main kind of longitudinal way that we're going to investigate. And this is the same way that sound travels through the air. If you can imagine that these are particles in the air and they're bouncing off each other as energy travels through them, and this is how sound travels from one place to another. Okay, so here's some property of longitudinal waves. So this distance between like two compressions or, or let's start here. The place where it gets really dense is called a compression. The place where it's the least dense would be a rarefaction, okay? And the distance between two compressions or two rarefactions would be equal to one wavelength. Now, um, one property that we talked about with transverse waves that's a little tricky here is amplitude, okay? Amplitude here is not the distance between these and these because distance, we just said, is like this distance along the spring is the wavelength, okay? And so an amplitude is a measurement of how much energy is in the wave or is related to how much energy. And so for these ones, amplitude has to do with how densely packed the compression is and how widely spaced the rarefaction is, okay? So it's how much pressure is in this place and what the difference is between the pressure here and the pressure there. And that's really how you measure the amplitude. So it's hard to talk about amplitude. We'll get into sound intensity a little bit, but it's tricky to talk about the amplitude. Of All right, so here's our definition of sound. So sound is just a longitudinal wave, a mechanical wave traveling through a medium. Okay, so there's it's causing particles to vibrate, pushing that energy through from one place to another. Okay, and so here's a quick question. Based on this definition, Let's go back to this, the riddle of the tree in the forest. Um, if a tree falls in a forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make any sound? The answer I'm going to say is yes, because sound doesn't need to be heard to exist. Let me go back to that page. As long as that tree produces vibrations in the air that travel through the air, then it's making sound. All right, um, and sound requires a medium. So there was a demonstration done where they created, put a little bell inside of a jar, and they sucked all the air out of the jar. And once all the air was gone, then you couldn't hear it anymore. And that was because there was no medium, there's no air particles for the sound to travel through. Okay, and if there's no air for the sound to travel through, then it doesn't create sound. Okay, because sound is that the energy traveling through the medium. Um, and so like in space, there would be no sound. And so if you watch movies about space, some movies get this right. They're floating in space, you can't hear anything. 
And again, that's because there's nothing through this for the sound to travel through. But other space movies have some very dramatic noises going on in, in space, which is false because you wouldn't be able to hear them because they wouldn't be creating sound because there's no air for the sound to travel through. Okay, so um, if you're looking at... So the purpose of this slide right here is this. This is a sound wave. It's a, a longitudinal wave. But these are really tricky to draw, okay, because it takes, you have to draw a lot of dots. It's difficult to show the differences in spacing. It's a lot easier to draw just like a sine wave like this, okay? And so when we draw sound waves, we're going to draw them as if they were transverse waves, but it's important to understand that they're not, that they're really longitudinal waves, and this is just a way that makes it simpler to draw. Okay, so the sound travels um, at speeds depending on the properties of the medium it's traveling through, okay? And so traditionally we say that the speed of sound in air is somewhere around 343 meters per second. But it really depends on um, the properties of the air and for whatever material, the properties of the material. So like air um, changes if, if the temperature is warmer temperature is cooler, if there's more humidity, those properties affect how fast sound can move in air. And really, it comes down to two things. So how dense the, the medium is that sound's traveling through. So the more dense something is, the more difficult it is to move. And so the slower the um, sound travels because it has to, it like that, the, each like individual chunk of matter has more inertia and so it takes more time to accelerate it um, but also a medium that is more elastic springs back quicker and results in faster speed so things that are are more rigid I guess elastic is maybe the wrong word but things that are more rigid allow to sound to travel faster okay and what it's going to turn out is that the density of the medium has a relatively low effect when you're comparing different types of materials, this is what matters when you're comparing like the same material. So like if air is denser, then sound's gonna travel slower. Steel is denser than water, but this part right here relative to elasticity is so much greater in steel that sound travels much, much faster in steel than it does in water. Okay, and what and sound even travels much faster in water than it does in air. And so these are some speeds of sound through different materials, okay? And um, there's something really interesting that happens when, when sound travels from one material to another, its wavelength changes a little bit, depending on whether it's speeding up or slowing down, okay? And if the wavelength changes, then the frequency changes, which means that the pitch or the the tone that you hear from the sound is going to change. Okay, and so there's there's a couple of really relevant examples of this. And the first is the the sound of your own voice. Okay, um, probably you can't stand the sound the way that your voice sounds, but you notice that um, nobody else seems to notice that your voice sounds so strange. And like if you listen to a recording of it, and the reason why is that when you listen to yourself talk, you hear something different from everybody else because everybody else is hearing the sound from your mouth traveling through the air, whereas you're hearing the sound from your mouth traveling through your skull. And the speed of sound is faster in your skull, which means that by the time it gets to your ears, the sound has actually stretched a little bit. It's got a higher wavelength. I'm sorry, a lower wavelength. It's been completely Rest. No, yeah, higher wavelength, which means a lower pitch. So your sound, when you hear yourself talk, your voice sounds lower to you. And then when you hear recording, it sounds really high pitch because of that. And so that's kind of an example of how we hear ourselves differently because of this, the sound traveling differently through our heads. Okay. And um, I mean, I don't think you ever really get over that. I still... When I record these videos and hear hear them playing back, I still get annoyed by my voice. So anyway, um, sound travels really, really fast in steel. And this is about how fast it travels in air. 
Oh, another example, if you were in water and you were to try to talk in the water, you could be listening to somebody else talk and you, their voice would sound super low um, for that same reason. Okay, so now we're going to look at some properties of sound waves. So that the pitch of a sound wave is determined by its frequency. Okay, so think of like a really high pitch sound, like a dog whistle or something, and a really low pitch sound, like um, a foghorn maybe. And those, the, the pitch depends on the frequency. Okay, and so here's an example of... Um, two waves, okay, this left one would be high pitch, it has a higher frequency, it's high, higher pitch, okay, the right one has a low pitch, all right, you can see it's spaced further apart, they have larger wavelengths, lower frequency, okay, and the volume is determined by the amplitude, okay, so now remember we discussed amplitude is tricky with sound, but that would be a loud sound wave, this would be a quiet one, and the difference in these peaks, the heights of these peaks, is going to come down to um, differences in the amount of, like the pressure differential of the wave, and we'll get into that later. So which type of waves are sound waves? They are longitudinal. The speed of sound is determined, uh, the speed of a sound wave is determined by what? The medium. Which sound wave represents a quiet, low-pitched tone? This would be A, B, C, and D. Which would be quiet and low-pitched? It would be D. Okay, low. It's quiet because it has a smaller volume, smaller amplitude. It's a lower pitch because there's a smaller, or the frequency is lower, as compared to that one. The pitch of a sound wave is determined by what? I just said it, the frequency. In which medium would a sound wave travel the fastest? It would be iron. Would sound travel in a vacuum? No. All right, so that will do it for this first video on sound. Okay, please let me know if you have any questions.